Liv, we are back for our Real Talk segment. How are you? Hey, everyone. Boy, do we have some news for you. (laughs) You go first. What's been happening? (laughs) Uh, Well, I mean, plenty of stuff. We let's start with me, but I, we should talk about the party first. Oh, your true, birthday, true. So for those listening, I'm now officially in my late thirties. <laughs> <laughs> Just clocked over to 36, so uh, the dear age of 36. So. I love being 36. Do you know what? Yeah. I reckon I've dreamt about being 36 my whole life. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's my love of even numbers. That's another thing about me. I hate odd numbers. I'm really? dreading 37. Uh, I feel like 37 is just going to be so shit. I'll be like, uh, fast forward to 40. Like, I feel like I'm ready for 40. I don't know. I'm weird like that. Oh anyway, how is it just nice to have everyone in the same room and yeah. you are the best at celebrating birthdays. Oh. And that it actually, yes, it's about you, but it's not actually about you because it's about all the, you know, connecting people that you meet and bringing everyone together. And Absolutely. I love that about you. Yeah, yeah. Every year I've, um, I still haven't grown out of that whole, oh, it's my birthday, let's have a party vibes. And it really is, as you said, an excuse to get every single person that means, you know, the world to me in a room and let's all just have a shitload of wine and have some good conversations, you know. All in the babysitters. <laughs> I often oh. have babysitters booked in months in advance for your birthdays. <laughs> this year we didn't get the hotel room only because that kind of ended up so badly last time. I feel <laughs> like I was just like, oh, I've got the hotel room so I don't have to go home to my children so I'm going to go extra large. This time we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Put it, that wasn't, yeah, wasn't an option this time around. <laughs> a good a good idea in theory maybe but probably good to uh, to get home. But, hey, to be fair, um, how good the daytime drinking the best you know yeah, yeah, yeah perfect in bed you know mine was a lunch at um, not a lunch it was a few drinks after lunch at a wine bar in South yeah. Yorker, tucked in bed by eight o'clock thank you very much happy Go days in bed happy days all about it glass of Barocca some Panadol and to bed (laughs) ready to go so yes I am excited about this new you know the new chapter and it's interesting because I think for look um I have always been one of the last you know the youngest of the year level and um because of the way way my where my birthday lands I was always quite Mm. um young and then now even at school with some of the school mums they're all sort of I'd say most of them are sort of early 40s and it was funny actually um one of us was teeing up a um, birthday lunch for one of the other parents and um and there was like this joke in the whatsapp group it's like oh well how old are you turning richard uh you know and he's like oh the ripe old age of you know the middle uh, mid 30s like oh you know like still looking you know like a 35 year old and they're like oh yes i remember those days i remember those good old days (laughs) um they're like quietly you know not responding they're like yep uh 36 over here so (laughs) not too far off you know that age that you're dominating the late 30s you are love it all no, about no, it's a good it. age oh, oh yeah um yeah it's a good time oh absolutely I'm already counting down I'm like even ready for my like my 40th birthday yeah, yeah. Bring New it York. On. I'm going to New York three oh, years of planning we're starting gonna, now it's going to be overseas let me tell you <laughs> but um but what about you what's been what's been happening outside oh, of I just think you know, last pod if I came on I was like I've got all my plates spinning like life's good the kids haven't been sick well I should have known I did not touch wood hard enough We've had bout of gastro. Oh. I don't know, like you know those weeks where you just lose control. I lost yeah. control. Like work, I'm in silly season at work. It's just so chaotic. I had a massive presentation and felt like I'd already like won the day by just getting the kids out the door. Right, like you know when you just you get into the office, and you're like, someone just say well done for like being here because. Yeah. It was so hard to get here, yeah. but in, this week in the chaos of just trying to leave the house, I forgot my glasses. I cannot see anything like the computer oh. screen uh, without my glasses. I had a huge presentation, probably one of the most important ones of my career to our oh. executive, and I had to do it with my sunglasses on. <laughs> so I just had to start with, like, I'm sorry, mum life. I have to wear sunglasses. I will not be able to see my slides or my notes if I don't wear them. And I could just see it was such an intimate group of people with these smug faces on the whole time just, like, (laughs) giggling at me like, you are a hot mess. 
So, but I embraced it and I just tried to laugh and show some vulnerability in yeah. how chaotic parent life is oh. sometimes. Wow. Thankfully, a lot of our executive are also parents, so okay. they got it and they were oh. like, well done you, <laughs> keeping it real. Could they, could they, like, think straight? I would be so put off. <laughs> they were, like, they were, I don't think they actually listened to a yeah. word that I said because <laughs> they were just laughing, like, or ribbing me the whole time. So really? the good news is the presentation went well. I just looked like an absolute <laughs> smart doing it. <laughs> like a, you know, oh, but anyway, we're yeah. just, you know, it's just a nice little reminder about this journey called parenthood of the highs and the lows and the glorious mess of it all. And Absolutely. I'm still being kind to myself. At least I'm still laughing. You know, yeah. those periods where you're just like, if I don't laugh. Yes then yeah, who knows right. what's around the corner <laughs> so good. we're staying strong yeah that's what yeah a few listeners might appreciate that story oh. because I was mortified that is absolutely oh. hilarious and that's the thing like if you, you gotta shrug it off and go okay another day in the life this is what we're doing we're doing the best we can on the daily and that's if it looks like sunnies today then it's sunnies today <laughs> Just going back to getting kids out of the house, yeah. if any listeners have any really good tips oh. about how you can effectively do that without yeah. losing your mind before yeah. 7.30 in the morning, please let me know. Yeah. I'm also I'm almost contemplating putting the kids to sleep in their clothes for the next day. I think I'm at that point. Like I am just like getting these kids into clothes kills me. Yes, yes. Um, we're just going through that defiant stage both of them at the same time yeah oh you know, do you know what 100 percent. and I think I mentioned this a few episodes ago around the fact that um I mentioned this to the teacher around how difficult it is to get a um our kids out the door and she was sort of mentioning the visualization and having like a couple of cards of like we do oh, this yeah yeah, yeah we do this and it they is. kind of yes. uh, you know they okay. can see the images of right the you might have to put a link to done. these yeah. I'm in. Yes. I'm willing. I'll give anything oh, a go. Right. I'm sure about your cards, but at this oh, point, I'll give your cards a go. <laughs> it's so difficult. One thing we're struggling with at the moment is a little bit of a back chat from uh, Noah. So loves uh-huh. a bit of, you know, you're telling him off and he's like, well, you know, you're not really going to do What are you going to do about it? it? Yeah. Like, you know, you just shush then. You just, and I'm like, oh my God, child. And the thing is like, the more we draw attention to it, the worse he gets. It's like, no, no, I'm never, no, I'm not going to do that. No, no. And that's all very, you know, like. Oh, he's his mother's son. Nasty. Oh, that's what Jules turns to me and he's like, this is what you <laughs> created, mate. <It> is you. <laughs> They're all your genes, not mine. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. tough, right? There's always, you know, the new challenge. But um, speaking of challenges, so this mm. is um, the last episode of the season that has nothing to do with challenges, actually. But today we are what talking season about this? Season five. Five. Congrats. So, well done. <laughs> Yes. Thank so you for listening, over, people. Yes, thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, And so, yeah, so today we're talking about challenges from a relationship perspective. So as you know, Liv, a lot of the guests that um I have on the pod uh, often will be couples or dads or, you know, um mums individually, and they'll be calling in about something that's keeping them up at night. And um, so there's been, and it's funny, this entire season has probably been the, the biggest mm-hmm. focus on relationships only because a, a lot of the call-ins have been mm-hmm. relationship oriented i mean we've had episodes about like sexless marriages and surviving affairs and even just down to like nitty-gritty around point scoring and mental load and things like that so um i because of that and because of all the conversations i've had around relationships i actually went off and um i've now completed my coaching course uh i've never haven't even told you this yet yeah no this is news to me yeah because i just was like i'd love to be able to have real even more um you know, fruitful conversations with those coming on. It's not, Mm. I don't necessarily, I mean, I don't see myself being a coach, you know, anytime Mm. soon, but I thought it would be just a really cool skill set to have. For I might benefit from this. Is this my first coaching session? Is that what you're about to tell me? (laughs) Great. Thanks for the heads up. (laughs) 
And I'm specifically focusing in on relationship coaching because I just think it's absolutely fascinating hearing couples mm. and what they're, you know, and the struggles that they're going through. Mm. And it normalizes it for us. And what I've realized is over 80 episodes, there's common trends across every relationship around mm. what they're sort of, you know, having difficulties with. And I think the more we speak about it, the more we normalize it. And also the more solutions we can come up with in supporting each mm. other through all of this. So um, mm. so that was like a soft intro to today okay. where we Hi. are telling audience um to ask us some questions around relationships and um so i know Liv, you love these ones these q and a oh, so. <laughs> um, i love these ones when i said to mark before guess what the theme of today is relationships he said don't you even so well, mark turn off now yeah. i said nothing about you darling yeah, right <laughs> So, all right. So I'm going to go first. So one of the callers, um, so the listeners called in um, with a question around what we, um, Jules and I, or our husbands, and um, mm -hmm. we often fight about. So I can okay. give you one that's um, the more, mo this only happened about a week ago. I have the biggest bugbear around my, the calendar. We have a calendar. Yeah. For a yeah. reason, right? And like, so for us, we've got like the Apple calendar and, you know, the green one is the family one and you pop the date, you pop your events in and everyone knows so that there's no clashes. And as you know, Liv, we were actually meant to report <laughs> this in like two weeks time, but mm -hmm. um, there was a clash on the calendar. Uh, so what happened was I thought we were like, I put in that we were away at the beach house that particular weekend. And I was obviously recording yeah. with yourself and I had other things yeah. booked in. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere the other day, it's, oh, you know, Jules turns to me and goes, oh, so, you know, that Saturday, obviously it's my brother's birthday and we're going to Geelong. So, um, so yeah, that all good. We'll just organize that. And I was like, hold on, what, what date was that? I was like, I don't believe is we have that in the calendar. calendar. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I told you about it. I'm like, is it in the calendar? Okay. Uh, no, I told one ear and out the other. Must oh, be yeah. in the calendar. It has to be in the calendar. And so then it was this whole thing. I told you about it. Well, it's not in the calendar. Now I have to reschedule the calendar. Calendar. now it's you know and it's so like trivial and honestly like so hilarious we're looking back at it now but it is amazing that like that life organization admin piece I just yeah. have such zero tolerance for it not you know going to plan it's probably because you are so time poor like every yes. single minute of your day is really accounted for yeah. really yeah. so anything that kind of disrupts that too because of the way like you need control over that for yeah. all the things that you are doing to yes. happen at the time that they need to. So yeah. for something to come in, I mean, we're the same. Like, we, you know, same thing happened in our household this morning, right? Oh. Like talking about, you know, working from home and who's in the office. We try, we've got a little calendar that sits behind me actually, so similar thing. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, you know. I said, well, next Friday I'm doing this. I'm in the city. I said, well, I'm in the city. And I said, I asked you two days ago uh, where the, where you will be, and you said you don't have any other day, any other Fridays in the city at the moment. And now, two days later, you're telling me yes. that you have a day in the city. Like yeah. what? Yeah. So yeah, it's the littlest things because yeah, we are planned almost to the minute and the day, and it is a logistical nightmare trying to pull all of this off. So I'm with you. I, I don't think that's silly. I yeah. totally believe <laughs> Um, so now we know to look at the calendar always like do you guys have a calendar I mean I know you've got your handwritten one I think you're the last person <laughs> on earth to have a handwritten calendar <laughs> I will be still rocking my hard copy diary which all all of you all of my friends will be laughing about right now because it infuriates if we're apt and they're like can we do what let's schedule the next time I'm like oh no my diary's at home like I yeah. have to wait to go home and check I double book myself all the time. I've tried yeah, you do. the online calendar. Yeah. It just doesn't work for me. Okay. No, we've just got a monthly, like a really big month calendar that's sitting behind me at the moment that's yeah. predominantly just social stuff. So yeah. what are we doing each weekend, days in the city, just key stuff that disrupts the flow yes. of family. Yes, yeah. Great yeah. thing to do if you don't have one for sure. Yeah. Whether it is your little write-down hard copy version like me or your yeah. online diary. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how else. Yeah, you, you. How else do you keep? How do how do others keep track? Like, I think 
Yeah, that is absolutely critical. And I think you're right. I mean, when you've got a lot of balls in the air, like all of us do, you know, we're juggling the kids. Sometimes, Mm. you know, for those who are working, they're juggling work. For those who aren't working, they're juggling Mm. everything else that goes with being a stay-at-home parent. Mm. Like it's, Mm. and you're right, my personality, your personality, a bit more type A, need to keep things in order. When things are not Mm. in order, shit hits the fan, like from Mm. a mental perspective for me. (laughs) We're not very good with going with the flow. No, no. need to know well in advance what is happening like don't surprise me like I'm not into yeah. that like I <laughs> just I need to know yeah how it's going to go totally things will happen but yeah for the most part if we can play most of it that's good oh 100% and it's interesting like when I think back to a lot of the conversations I've had with couples around their biggest challenges a lot of it like and this was something that was probably more prevalent for me even like six months ago um, was the point scoring thing I'm doing more Mm. I'm this I'm that Mm. and I think we both saw that I mean I'm probably speaking Mm. before you live curious as to what you think but when you've got really young kids and you're just trying to navigate like you know this new world that you've been thrown into as a parent that was really prevalent but now it's more about let's just keep shit organized like you yeah. know yeah was that the same with you with the point scoring or did you guys ever- oh completely like thinking just thinking about that question about what do we mainly fight mm-hmm. about it hasn't necessarily yeah we've probably moved away from the point scoring I'm about to contradict that it's mm-hmm. fine if the mental load or the swing of responsibility is falling more to one parent yeah. which for the last little bit has been falling more to mark yeah. so he we don't necessarily fight about it but it's like an increasing level of tension that kind of comes into our world that's not helped by my mum guilt already feeling bad and if he makes the smallest comment that was not intentional in any way I will just snap and you know make some sort of excuse and say well fine I'll quit my job then or whatever it might be yeah so it's yeah that's kind of how it plays out in our relationship but as I've spoken about on the pod before you know like the calendar and just checking in with each other and creating time and space to be able to chat as much as we can through it as to yeah I need to check myself in that moment because this is why I reacted in the way that I did has kind of helped us through that a little bit yeah, absolutely. It's um that actually almost goes into the second question, which is um around what have you actually noticed with your friends' relationships around their biggest challenges? Uh, and you know, I was actually sitting with a girlfriend of mine more recently having a coffee. She's got quite a big job. She's um you know very um much yeah very demanding job. She also has an au pair uh, and st- but then. And then her husband also has a very, very demanding job. And she said, what we're really struggling with at the moment is that we feel like we're losing each other in just the daily chaos that is our lives. And she goes, yeah. and God, I've got help. Like, you know, and, yeah. well, you know, I don't understand, I don't even, can't even yeah. imagine how difficult it would be if I didn't. She's actually um, in real estate. And so she works yeah. around the clock. You know, they don't yeah. clock off ever when the buyer calls mm-hmm. at eight o'clock at night on a Monday, you're picking up phone sort of thing so very demanding and therefore it kind of makes sense that they've also got that extra support but um you know and I I noticed that a lot of with friends it's just that whole you know piece around we're just trying to keep this family afloat in the very best way possible and hey yeah us as a couple is kind of secondary right now you know I see a lot of that with friendships do you see that so do I exactly the same and I think that's a fear I think it's a reality you know, as we become parents, I think it's right to say for most relationships that we put our kids first. Mm-hmm. Everything that we're doing, we're working as hard as we are, we, you know, for our kids, right? They are mm-hmm. our priority and it just means that ourselves and we've spoken about self-care and then our relationship mm-hmm. often takes a back seat. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really hard, mm-hmm. yeah, to manage and find solutions for I you know I certainly reflect on and have spoken with girlfriends that you often can catch yourself in that free fall you know that things you're not as connected as what you have been it takes a lot of time and investment like you you have to catch it at that point if you don't do something about it in the minute that you don't feel as connected with your partner it'll only get worse you have to find the time and space and talk about it and you know go on a date or go away for a weekend away or 
put some time into just sitting on the couch together rather than, you know, I can catch myself sitting in my office at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night and probably have own, haven't even spoken to Mark and, you know, I go, what am I doing? Like, yeah. you know, you've got to find the time to put back into your relationship and that's certainly something that, yeah, oh, my God, all of us talk about. I, oh. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think anyone's immune from that oh. at any point, no matter who you are or what you do or yep. whether you're a stay-at-home mom or yep. what, yeah, I think everyone, yeah, and the work that you've got to do and put into your relationship is really important because it's not easy. Like that's the other thing, like divorce rates are through the roof. Something it's closer to 50%. Someone yeah. was telling me the other day, like that's madness. That's yeah. terrifying and super scary to me. Mm. I just feel, yeah, I just like to kind of settle back into relationships are not easy. You have to work at them. You have to invest. And, you know, there's a lot of generational change of when things get too hard, you just put your hands up and go, well, this doesn't feel right anymore. I quit. So I think there's a good discussion around that at some point. That's just my personal view. Oh, do you know what? A hundred percent. And it's difficult with kids. I mean, at the moment, I mean, back in the day, we would pop the kids when they're a bit younger in bed, um, you know, by 7.30. And then Jules and I would stay up and watch an hour of yeah. I don't know, maths or something that just to kind yeah. of like sit together, have a whiskey and before I went to bed. And I went, I got to bed quite early, like 8.30, I like to be in bed, nine o'clock I'm asleep. And um, in that half an hour, I try to read a book, right? Or yeah. like try to not scroll Instagram for too long. Um, so, but, you know, and now as the kids are older, I mean, you know, two and a half and four, um, you know, they're not going to bed till 8, 8 8.30. And I'm there going, wow, my time is so squeezed because I'm up at five yeah, in the morning, um, you know, and now I, I found, and then often, because I just put them in bed, then if Noah hears that, we're up and the tv's on what are you watching what are you doing and we just weren't being able to settle into an evening yeah. together downstairs so what i do now and the routine is we finish dinner i wash up jules does the books with the kids um we both put each kid to bed and then i go straight into bed by then it's like 8 30 i'm in yeah. bed reading my book jules yeah. is like night kiss on you know peck and, and off he goes yeah. downstairs and he's gone off to do work and i'm upstairs reading my book and then we go to bed so that's it yeah. so, and yeah. like during dinner it's like chaos because this person's yeah. talking, you know someone yelling at someone kids, like toys you, are all over the floor exactly like <laughs> now these days even when jules comes to kiss me noah's like ew yuck don't do that dad i'm like we can't even freaking have a peck on the lips when i walk through the door without our toddler screaming at us like, <gasps> like oh, give us a break cute. here child like you know oh. it's so hard and so to yeah. your point if you don't actively and so yeah during the week sometimes we barely speak to each other other than yeah. over text it's like hey are you doing this pick up yeah yeah for dinner i'll pick up that it's all just logistics like yeah. it's not, yeah. it's not yeah. like oh honey i love you like you yeah. know we don't have time for that shit but the thing yeah. that really supports us and what i told i told my friend and a few you know other people through discussions is we put things in the diary to enable ourselves mm. to look forward to something so you mm. know t- tonight for example we've got something on we're going for dinner right and that was booked mm. i don't know six weeks ago me and my vigilant diary you know and <laughs> we have that in there so although i haven't yeah. spoken to him for like six weeks it's like I'm like now I know we're going to get back on track and you know but then again it that that is not necessarily easy for everyone either like that is probably a privilege when you've got young children to be able to duck off and have a dinner for two hours with your husband outside of the home you know it's, so I see okay. how it happens. What, yeah whatever you can do to just find some uninterrupted time even if that's 10 minutes right yeah. like yeah. of just how are you? Like, let's just like eyeball each other and kind of just check in. Yeah. And yeah, you can go one better than that and get completely away for you, from your kids for a walk or, yeah, a beautiful dinner or a show or something. Well, yeah, it's time and money well spent. Oh, 100. I mean, even a few episodes ago, you were talking about, you know, your time away in Perth, for example, like, yeah. and that was such a reset. Like, oh. that's what you've got to kind of do as 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 yeah. best you can. We've just started looking away. at what what are we going to do for the next little one. Yeah. We definitely won't yeah. be going to WA this time. There are lots of <laughs> local options, so we'll focus yeah. local. But yeah. just to get a night or two away from the kids to just yeah feel like our old selves yeah our new version of our old selves um would be yeah would be really nice yeah it's so important um another question that we had was what is one thing that your parents did in their relationship that you would like to mirror Uh, you and I've spoken about this before so I might be taking yours and I know that you create this in your family and you've kind of just hinted at it um 
my dad would give my mum a kiss leaving the house and returning to the house every single day um regardless of whether they had had a big fight or things are not good it was just a way of showing love to Nick and I and commitment and respect and mum was often cooking dinner and it was just a nice way of you know dad kind of saying thank you like I really feel that I came from a very loving family household environment just from the small that small sack which I was kind of like no I, oh gross like yeah. mum dad like you know just a peck on the cheek yeah. but I think that was really important to show a respectful relationship did I steal yours were you gonna say no, something like so I've got another one so yeah okay. no, that is a good one though and um you've yeah, heard about that a lot from just you know in the relationship world I get like it is the smallest gestures it's the hand yeah. on the back it's yeah. the you know these little things that not only yeah. you feel satisfied then in your relationship but also the kids are picking up on that and they're mm. seeing what affection actually looks mm. like which I think is mm. just so beautiful yeah. um one thing for us which I used to despise but now I'm like shit that was good every Sunday we would go for a family lunch yeah. and that was even when I was like 24 three and still like or like you know probably not 23 I'm sort of thinking of the years 18, but was, 19. Like, yeah uni days right and I'm hungover AF oh, from like I just oh. basically got at home at 7 a.m I'm barely peeling my eyes open and yeah. then at like 12 o'clock on the dot everyone had to be at the front door off yeah. we go for a lunch and we always did that and the kid, my sisters would always be you know I remember when they were younger like coloring in at the table and I'd be there like just trying to stay awake and like you know mum and dad there you know and we just go to our usual like yeah. there was kind of five yeah. restaurants on rotation and mum was really insistent on that and I mm. look at that now and I'm like I really mm. love that I think just having mm. moments where the family are together I mean even yes. down to dinners we would always yeah. have dinners as a family like were you the same the same yeah, um yeah. and that's certainly something I think purely because the boys are so little and yeah. we're getting home so late that that is failing miserably in our household yeah. at this point but I imagine that when they're older and that's certainly Mark, Mark and I discuss that pre-kids is something that would be important to us when we both have big jobs that we would find a way home for dinner at 6 30 yes. um to have that family dinner with our children um yeah. I think yeah that level of connection and you know being able to communicate with each other about all of our days so the kids yeah. get an insight into mum and dad's world and mum yes. and dad get more of an insight into the kids world even if they're just grunting at us when they're 14, 15. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's so important. But, yeah, connection. Connection, communication. You know, we talk about it so much on the on on the pod and it's so real. Just yeah, creating those ways. I, I like I love that. And um even like I had someone mention to me, you know, they'll say to their kids, okay, well, what's one thing that didn't go well today? And what's one thing that yeah. did be grateful for? Yeah. Like, you know, and yeah. really sort of bringing them into the conversation and everyone sort of being able to mm. do that. At the moment, our dinners look like, you know, if we are sitting together, the, the TV is bloody on, like the kids yeah. are watching Peppa Pig, like, you know, it's just yeah. chaos. Someone doesn't want to eat their, you know, everyone. Person ends up on the like, floor or in the bin, usually yeah, probably like, in the bin because they haven't eaten anything. Like, and I'm frustrated. And you're ready because yeah. you've just like spent half an hour preparing a meal that they, yes. I don't like it. <laughs> you haven't even tasted it, mate. Like, give it a whirl. I'll give you a sticker. Oh. Come on. It's so, and then, oh, I want to colour in while I'm uh, eating and then, oh, I don't want, and I want what's on your plate and it's just like a mess. So how I envisioned these. That is the ultimate secret though. Put vegetables, put good stuff on yep. mum's plate or dad's yeah. plate. That's the way you get your kid to eat yes. because they'll eat what's on your plate, not on theirs. A hundred percent. Every day of the week. Yeah. So no, our lovely dinners with like, how did your day go, darling? And not yeah, happening yeah. at all right yeah, now. Yeah, it's good. Okay. I feel better. forward to in the future, I believe. Yes. Yes. I hope so. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. No, I love that. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that sort of rounds out for today. I just, I thought it was really cool just to kind of get a bit of insight into like what else mm. is experiencing in the relationship front and good reminder to us as well and to those um, listening about maybe thinking about I don't know things that we can shift even just the smallest thing i.e give the peck on, on the cheek and leave yeah. and you come if that's yeah. not something you're already yeah. doing you know these small adjustments can really make a big difference I think mm -hmm. yeah I agree hope you all got something out of that 
Yeah, and we are going to take a couple of weeks break and then we're going to be back raring to go for season six. My goodness, we are so you want me back? through these seasons. Right, okay, oh, be hired. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> we are, yes, absolutely. My Can't wait for my coaching time. sessions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, so excited to see what's to come. But, yeah, for those who have listened to us for, I don't know, 80-plus episodes, amazing. Thank you so much for all of your support. And for those of you who haven't listened um, to all our episodes, feel free to go back. Um, and we'll be putting, likely putting some of our most listened to episodes, um, airing them during the break as well, so you can listen to them then as well. Awesome. All right, Liv, we'll take care. We'll be back next season. See you soon.